Right. <laughs> Welcome back to another Q&A Monday here on the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Sorry, Metal. I really messed it up. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> the late response, I am so I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals, and welcome to another Q&A Monday here on the Metal Roofing Channel. Uh, today I've got Julianne Calipa and Jeff Hawk returning, and I've got Lori Reynolds on the phone. She's calling in from Starbucks. How are you doing, Lori? Glug, 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 yum! Got my charge for the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Lori is part of Sheffield's technical department. You want to tell us a little bit about what you do at the uh, company and your industry experience, Lori? Oh, sure. Happy to. Um, for those of you that see me on LinkedIn, my moniker is I period love period metal period. That just about sums it up. But essentially for a couple of decades now, I have been promoting architectural metal and loving it and now have my opportunity to do so direct to the architects and kind of behind the scenes uh, reviewing plans and specs for Sheffield, and I'm thrilled to do it. Great, great company. Every day is a new challenge. Cool. Well, I'm excited to have you on, Lori. Um, today, we are talking about engineered systems. Um, so first, why don't, uh, Jeff and Lori, why don't you tell me a little bit about what engineered systems are, what makes a system engineered? Well, an engineered system is a panel profile that has been tested over a certain deck substrate or substrate period, whether it be a solid substrate or open framing. Uh, testing includes uplift testing, whichever is applicable for the deck substrate, uh, water penetration testing, air infiltration, air infiltration testing, uh, it could be water submersion depending on the application, fire ratings, hail ratings, impact testings, wind driven rains uh, testing, all depends on which testing you need per your local building codes. Um, so an engineered system is one that has been tested to meet the criteria of the design that it, for that area. And also that, that we as a, as a company and a culture hold, hold our products to those standards. You know, and we don't deviate. Right. Yep, that's a good thing to remember um, because as a, as a buyer, it's really important to know, um, to have that peace of mind that, the company that you're purchasing from stands behind what they're selling. They stand behind the test um, so that you can really build that customer trust. And you know the product's going to perform once it's installed on your on your project, whether it's a homeowner or a commercial building owner. You know, it's, you know it's going to meet the requirements that you put forth. So is an engineered system more common in like a residential or a commercial, or does it not matter? Well, you'll definitely see more engineered systems and commercial roofing because you have an architect that has a specification and that lists all the requirements that they need to meet. Um, most homeowners don't have an architect, you know, for their building or for their house. Um, so there is, isn't really a specification that you need to meet, but engineering, I believe, is important whether it's residential or commercial. You want to know whatever you're having put on your house or building is going to perform. And, and I can also share from a personal perspective, I've owned three houses in my life, three homes that all had metal roofs, two were on ridge tops. And, and the one I'm in right now is going to be, the next evolution is going to be engineered. It's a, it'll be better. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but ridge tops, a lot of exposure to wind. What what is a ridge top? Yeah, um, j just a higher point where uh, wind is either coming up from a valley or down from a, a higher point and across and across your your flat part, which you know it's the it's the top of a ridge that sometimes has it continues on up or it goes into a valley. So very very unpredictable unpredictable winds. And it makes sense to have an engineered system, especially in, in that application, because of that unpredictability. It will. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Lori, I've got a question here um, that someone asked. If a profile is UL listed, does that mean it's engineered? No. 
No, it does not. Um, if it's, it, it means it's UL listed. Um, and I, I think I'll let Jeff take the, take the helm in, in talking about construction numbers because um, actually I've learned how to really explain this even more, but I don't want to take the wind from his sails. So um, no he can talk about <laughs> UL construction numbers. <laughs> Okay. Well, a, UL, well a, a UL 90 construction number is um, able to be purchased from underwriters laboratories on a specific panel profile. Basically, a lot of people in the industry all have the same inch and a half mechanical, for example, panel profile. So instead of everybody going out and testing it, you can purchase a UL construction number from underwriters laboratories. Basically, that number says if you install it exactly per this UL90 construction number, then we will say that you have a UL90 rating. There is no engineered stamp that goes on an engineering report. There is no actual test being done on your product. It's just this panel's been around so long. If you install it per this, we know that it should have no problem meeting UL90. But there is no actual test performance base to back up that statement. Um, another thing with UL90 construction numbers is that a lot of times in the deck construction, they do things that aren't exactly industry standard as what you would normally see on, you know, a normal roof installation. Um, you know, say if it's over a plywood deck, you know, usually you nail down the plywood deck. A lot of these UL construction numbers will require you to use Phillips screws. Um, so, or you'll have to caught the seams of the plywood where they butt up against each other to stop that air from coming underneath. Those aren't typical things that people normally do when installing a roof deck. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of times those items are missed when people are installing it per that UL90 construction number. So if you put it on and you don't screw down the deck and you don't caulk the seams, if it's in your UL90 construction number, that construction number isn't valid because it wasn't installed per the construction number. Um, when you have manufacturers go out and actually test, they test per UL580, which encompasses UL90, but they actually build a test deck on real-world applications on how it would be installed in the field, and you get a true UL90 engineered system. And then you could take that further, uh, continuing on to UL1897, which basically sees how high of a pressure that panel can reach before it fails. And is that what kind of testing uh, you're going to be doing next week? That is. We're going to be doing several UL580 slash eighteen ninety seven testings along with uh, water penetration and water submersion. Can you kind of talk me through that process? What's, what's that going to be like? Uh, for the UL580 test, we build a 10 by 10 test specimen um, based over wood, BDEC, BDEC with ISO, whatever substrate it is that, or assembly it is that we're trying to test. And then we actually install it how it would be done in the field. You put down the wood deck, you nail it off per the spacing. So in order for that engineering to be valid, you'd have to nail the deck off per what we tested at. Um, you install the underlayment, and then you install the panel with the clips at a certain spacing, depending on what spacing it is that you require at the time. And then they basically try to blow it up and see how high of a pressure it can get. Once UL90 stops, in UL580 you have UL30, UL60, UL90. Once UL90 stops, then it moves over to the 1897 testing, which basically takes it up in a certain increment um, of pressure and sees how much it can sustain before it blows off or has a um, critical failure. And you don't use a different test specimen for each class. You start, it basically works the panel with positive and negative pressure through UL30, and that same test specimen now goes through UL60, and then that same specimen goes through UL90. So it's been stressed three different times by the end of the 580 test. So you're seeing how it performs, and you're seeing what it does, where the failure points are, if it has any. Um, you know, obviously, the tighter your clip spacing, the better your panel's going to perform because it's being held down to the roof deck better. Uh, the wider your clip spacing, you have a chance of failing earlier. And that's the essence of an engineered system right there, is, is that testing. Right. You're testing how the product is to be applied and what it, how it can perform once it's installed that way. 
Is there a cost saving or a cost difference between a non-engineered and an engineered system? You're not going to get charged more for an engineered system. Okay. Um, you know, Sheffield Metals does engineering. We don't pass that cost on to the customers. We provide that as a service to use our products. Um, where a cost increase might come in is clips being put at a certain distance. Okay. So say if it's a non-engineered system and the person installing it, you know, puts their clips at three foot on center, whereas our engineered system, we put it at two foot on center. There's going to be an increased cost because you have an increase in materials, yeah. but you also have the peace of mind knowing that if I put my clips at two foot on center, this is how the panels could perform. If I put them at three foot on center, I don't know how, I don't know, it might perform okay, it might not, I don't know, because we didn't engineer it. Um, other things is, you know, whenever you do engineering, you have to use the same clip that you engineered with, the same fasteners, so it's not, well, if I put any clip at two foot on center, it has to be the clip it was tested with. Right. And that's the, uh, when, when you've been testing that system, um, you test it at those particular increments, so if if it's installed at uh, an increment greater than that, then it's no longer that engineered system. Correct. That's correct. So there's no like room for deviation. It's it's that or at nothing. which it's yeah it's that or nothing. Right now yeah. you can have calculations done. Say if you test at one foot and four foot, you can have calculations done to tell you how it would perform at two foot and three foot. But you need that closest space and you need that furthest space to be able to come up with how it will perform in between. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think that brings us to our last question here. Um, actually, you had a question about warranties. Why don't we talk, I did. About, why don't we talk yeah. about that first? Uh, so I wanted to know <laughs> what the difference is between the two, like with warranties in mind. So do they get one warranty more if they're engineered or less? Or how does that work or does it matter? We, we require a minimum UL90 rating on any of our weather type warranty systems. Oh, okay. We don't warranty systems that aren't engineered at all. Um, we don't do warranties on residential buildings. Okay. And honestly, the main reason for that is residential buildings are obviously a lot smaller. We require so many inspections for our weather type warranties. Um, You'd be we, doing it all day. We just can't stay. We just, you know, by the time you get there and inspect it, you get back home, it's done. Yeah. So, um, you know, the commercial buildings are obviously larger. You have more time to go out and, and do the inspections. But we, we require a minimum UL90 rating, even if the specification doesn't call for it. You're going to install it a minimum per UL90 if you're doing a weather type warranty with Sheffield. I think that brings us to our last question. Um, if you don't uh, provide warranties for residential buildings or, or inspect residential buildings, um, does that mean residential buildings don't need engineering or should they still consider engineering as a, as a good thing? Uh, I think every project needs engineering to some degree. Um, depending on where, I mean, whether you're a, con a commercial building owner or a homeowner, you still want the same peace of mind knowing that the product that you're going to be putting on your house or building is going to perform. Yeah. Um, now, to the level of engineering that a commercial building might need per uh, residential building, I'm not saying that they're the same, but um, you know, I will say that especially if you're in a coastal area or you know, in Florida, obviously Florida has their own set of rules, um, you definitely want your building or home engineered per your geographical location. Right. You want to make sure it can handle the environment. Um, you know, Atmosphere, normal and extreme atmospheric conditions that you have in your area. I live in Florida. We get hurricanes, you know, yearly. Um, so everything in Florida has to be FPC approved at minimum, um, you know, for the most part. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure whatever you're putting on your house is going to perform. And, you know, there's one way to do that. And that's engineering. You're having an engineered system so you know that it'll meet what you're looking for. If I go up and I say, well, I think if I put my clips at this spacing, you know, you'll be okay, but I don't have a test with a PE stamp on it to back it up, then, you know, I can't really say that. And uh, on our installation episode, we talked about being proactive as a building owner. What can you do to ensure good installation, a safe and, uh, you know, effective installation, I think, Knowing that your system's been tested, it's an engineered system, that's a, that's a big step forward as far as being proactive. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. On the front end and not yeah. the back end. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. you don't want to find out after your roof's installed that, uh, you know, <laughs> Oh, by the way, <laughs> right. that's not tested. Right. Just kidding. <laughs> it might not hold up. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, for being on the episode. Thanks again to Lori and Jeff from our technical department. Thanks to Julianne. Thanks. Uh, check out her blog on SheffieldMetals.com. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel. Comment with any questions for future episodes of Q&A. Anything else? Like I said, check out Sheffield Metals online, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.